विजय सर थैंक्स फॉर स्पेरिंग टाइम we completely you. understand that you must be working overtime because you are not only coordinating activities within india for our fight against covid but you must be also interacting with large number of international agencies like who world bank unicef unesco and so on and so forth so sir uh, i would like to start the discussion with a very first very basic question that sir what is your take about the status of india's fight against covid well you know um while india started dealing with covid other countries notably china had already seen the brunt of the start and the exponential growth and today we have other uh, places you know in the us new york for example is an exa- uh, is there italy france spain and the uk now while there is much to learn from these other contexts we must remember that a direct imposition of those examples over here will not work our contexts are important and how are they important our demography is important our population density is important what social distancing means in these areas what economic impact mean in our in our contexts the differences in health system uh, and so on so forth so we have actually there have been teams at very uh, intense discussions at the health ministry at you know other ministries all discussing this and you know acting immediately on the ground so it's an enormous challenge to take very complex multi component boundary conditions and take decisions every day and india has done an incredible job in that so sir uh, uh, when it comes to the success stories or failures sir according to you because we are now uh, in first week of april and we have fighting we have been fighting with this covid uh, epidemic for last about 15 days or so uh, uh, f- when we started our lockdown on 22nd of march sir according to you what were our successes and where you think we need to still improve sir well you know india did a very good thing about checking international travelers early on that was very good and you know our um, tracking system for their contacts was very good so that is the uh, area which i think we did well now as time goes on uh, because we didn't understand at that time the nature of the spread of the disease uh, you know we didn't know how much asymptomatic people spread or not we don't know whether what is the extent of contacts which need to be there uh, for it to spread is it an intense one off uh, experience of a cough or a sneeze or is it proximity over a long time so as we have learned about these kinds of things better from incidents here as well as incidents abroad our response has become better and better so for example uh, we have now scaled up and we need to scale up a lot more and that is happening uh, of testing of various kinds new kinds of tests have been introduced they have to be calibrated and used very carefully you can't just arbitrarily use them and very importantly contact tracing has also been introduced so a combination of contact tracing as well as uh, testing would be very valuable i would urge everyone to look at the um, arogya setu app and download it it's available for all smartphones but also there will be a feature phone version very soon this allows us to know if you have been in contact with someone who later tested positive and then by using very complex algorithms plus your own self assessment we can find out whether you are at risk and to what extent your risk is and therefore we can protect you uh, this combined with testing is going to be incredibly powerful in a large population such as us so sir you recently there were when we were tweeting uh, uh, we were read, uh, also reading a lot of reports which were getting published and uh, one report uh, was talking about com- correlation between bcg vaccination and immunity towards covid 
So, sir, what is your take on this, sir? Uh, that's a very important point which you have raised about BCG vaccination uh, and uh, relationship to um, uh, the uh, COVID illness. Now, it's important to keep in mind that right now there is not any strong evidence of widespread deployment of BCG or other related vaccines for COVID-19. So doing so under present circumstances uh, would be a very, I would say, even a knee-jerk response to a very complex manner. Now, there was a preprint posted by some people, uh, it's Otazu et al. in Med Archives, and this has been interpreted widely to suggest that universal BCG vaccination is correlated with low rates of COVID-19. Now, older people are susceptible to serious illness from COVID-19. And the claim that if, is that if they were BCG immunized because their country started universal BCG uh, immunization many years ago, they will be protected. Now, this has been uh, reinterpreted to suggest we should start BCG vaccination now. So this is not necessarily the case. Now the claim suggestion is supported by the relatively recent demonstration of what is called trained innate immunity, that BCG leads to a relatively long-lasting non-specific inflammation in the body, BCG immunization, right? And this put together suggests that there'll be an innate higher immunity response. And so these are the kinds of, you know, suggestions which are being put together. Now, the important point is that there are a number of difficulties in this analysis. They don't calculate the relative severity of the disease, uh, other cases of causes of death in a normalized population. They don't ex uh, explain why there are more deaths and cases in high income countries than in low income countries, even though both have had universal BCG immunization. So there is a correlation, there is interesting scientific logic behind it, but this has to be tested out very carefully before one jumps into this. And therefore, uh, uh, international trial is happening, I think one in Europe and one in Australia, and that data uh, needs to uh, come in along with this to take uh, a conclusion. So, sir, if what you're saying, if my understanding is correct, it means uh, what you wanted to suggest that it is to still premature to actually establish these correlations and jump to the guns. See, I think these are interesting correlations and they're worth exploring. But a correlation is, is different from a decision that this is the case. So we should be very carefully uh, careful to distinguish between those. So it is true there is something in it. The immune system does not generally seem to be uh, uh, yet. The immune system doesn't generally provide a broad spectrum protection for any length of time. That also needs to be kept in mind. There's no such thing as a magic vaccination which will keep your immune system high for a long length of time. Continuing our discussion, currently, sir, um me as chief innovation officer and certainly as principal scientific advisor to prime minister and government of india you must be getting a lot of emails messages from indian citizens stating that they have developed some or the other technology uh, maybe low cost ventilators or masks or uh, some tools trackers uh, which will help india fight against covid but many of these technologies are still in uh, nascent, they are untested. So, sir, whether we as country, whether we have assigned any, uh, assigned or we have asked any of our research institutions to actually look at these technologies and explore whether they can be actually validated and confirmed before taking them uh, to the next level. Well, thank you very much. Um, there are indeed uh, a very large number of ideas, proposals which come every day. Um, and to take uh, care of them, we have a group which filters them. This is a group uh, chaired by Dr. Vinod Paul and myself. And we both proactively suggest things for institutions to do, as well as look at these ideas which come. 
Now, these ideas fall, they're all very well-meaning and well-intentioned, and they fall into different categories. Some of them are truly innovative uh, and are very uh, implementable in a very short time, some in a midterm and some in a long term, and all three are valuable in their own way. The others are slightly more complex. They're not easy to implement, but they're not too bad. Some others are ideas which are really not implementable, and some are completely, you know, out over there, and they shouldn't be looked at, even if they're well-intentioned. So this kind of a filtering system needs to be done, and we have got a group of top scientists all over the country to whom we send these ideas every day, and they then review them and come back. And then my office, uh, a few people and I look at those reviews, go through it very carefully, and give the people who propose these ideas feedback. Sometimes we, you know, the, the feedback is positive, they embark on new things. And indeed, many of our innovators, institutions have done wonderful things with such kind of feedback. So, sir, would you like to share some stats in that regard that how many ideas you have got? Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I think um, roughly every day, uh, anywhere from 10 to 20 uh, ideas come in. Most of them are very easy to deal with, even though they require right. some time. You know, they because it's not that everyone thinks of new things every day. There are many people that are doing the same thing and connecting them to each other is perfectly fine. But some of them are very complex and require regulatory or other types of uh, facilitation. And that's what Dr. Vinod Paul and my committee does. We, we help them through the regulatory process. And that's gone on really well. So, and there is any currently way of funding some of these ideas? Because I also get an idea, get these kind of messages or emails a day. So, uh, and I really don't know what to do it. I, I pass it on to uh, my seniors or I actually pass it on to some people at PSA's office. But uh, whether there is any mechanism where we can actually help them uh, scale up or something of that sort? Well, there are, you know, three different kinds of funding sources. Institutions now, because of the emergency, have a lot of flexibility in internally supporting these things. Outside entrepreneurs also can go to our current structures, such as BIRAC or, you know, TDB elsewhere, and they'll get rapid support. Uh, importantly, CSR has come and corporate social responsibility has come in in a big way to support. So these are all very exciting. Industry themselves have taken up projects. So even though it's tough and the flow of resources is um, always not easy, but in this time, you know, the flexibility in the rules is there and resources therefore are becoming more available. Uh, so, so, sir, I'm aware about you and Paul, sir. You, you people are doing some phenomenal job, sir. Uh, so, sir, uh, are you... But these ideas majority are coming from uh, citizens and the, but sir, are you happy or satisfied with the way our Indian scientific community has responded to this COVID crisis? Sir? Well, I think they've responded incredibly. We had multiple rounds of conversations with our city science clusters in Bangalore, Hyderabad, uh, Pune and in the Delhi region. And all these have, you know, done huge collaborative things together. Uh, Pune is focusing on repurposing of drugs. They've done a tremendous job. Bangalore has done a great job in IT dependent uh, uh, ways of looking at this, as well as in vaccines. Um, all of them have done great in opening up diagnostic labs. The Tata Memorial Center is a uh, hospital is a part of this. They've used the National Cancer Grid to repurpose to look at COVID in a big way. IIT Delhi is a major player in both new diagnostic tests and textiles. It's, it's you know, just incredible. We meet um, on video regularly and you know having a very strong foundation in science and engineering means that any problem, however complicated when you face, scientists and engineers get together and do wonderful things. So sir, uh, last uh, week uh, we had organized through MHRD our Ideathon. It was a concept of how we can source good ideas 
good concepts, good prototypes. Uh, and we got a phenomenal response. We got participation of from about 5,500 uh, different uh, teams, out of which about 350 teams were from startup domain. And uh, it was a fairly successful challenge. It was a pilot for us, but now we are going to come up with real mega challenge kind of a thing, which we will be announcing in next two or three days. So, sir, for that challenge, what do you think, whether there is, there is any message from you uh, where or an appeal on which areas our youngsters should focus uh, so that uh, the solutions which they will provide will be beneficial, not only for uh, current COVID crisis, but even handling post-COVID uh, issues, which we will be uh, coming up in India? You know, I think uh, this is a very, very important question. And my suggestion is that, you know, we have to look at areas where for our effort, maximum returns can come in, in terms of value to a large number of people. And therefore, I would focus on our poorest and our most vulnerable. Uh, what does social distancing mean in a very crowded area where there are several people to a room? How can you implement social distancing there? What other kinds of technologies you would use in that space to effectively increase social dis uh, distancing? How would you have you know, hygienic opening and shutting of taps, water supply, washing when multiple people share the same wash basin or the toilet or the shower uh, or the bath. You know, so these are the kinds of things which would be very, very important. How would you deal with economic, uh, you know, uh, growth in such a situation where some people have to go work some of the days and others not? Uh, what do the others do? So these are very complicated logistical ch uh, challenges as well as technical challenges, but they have solutions which can be very, very important and long lasting. This is a horrible crisis which has come like a bolt from the blue, but it is also an opportunity for us to revisit how we deal with our health systems, our communities, our priorities, our friendships, and this opportunity should also be taken. So I think, sir, uh, uh, we can close this on a very, very positive note. Uh, you, thanks for sparing time. We sincerely appreciate uh, that you spoke to us in spite of your enormously busy schedule. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much, Abhay. Always a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you.